The Arctic is home to around 4 million people, with an estimated 10% represented by indigenous peoples in more than 40 ethnic groups. Climate change presents growing pressures to their homes and traditional livelihoods, but also opens new opportunities. Interact has networked about 90 research stations in the north and has provided access for around a thousand researchers from across the globe. Some work with indigenous peoples to document, understand and predict the acute effects of climate change. We have seen firsthand the challenges but also the incredible resilience of the Arctic peoples. Tuktiaktuk is a hamlet in northern Canada, bordering the Arctic Ocean. Situated right on the coast, the community is at the mercy of climate change. The effects uh, that we're facing today in Tuktiaktuk is really drastic. There's been a lot of changes in my lifetime that I've, that I've witnessed. They live on the permafrost, a vast area of ice-bound soil in the Arctic that can be thousands of years old. Being in Tuktiaktuk, there's a reason why people are there because of our harbour, um, obviously because of all the wildlife. The community really thrives off of the land. We harvest snow geese, caribou, uh, beluga whale, and then we have you know, all the berries throughout the season. But due to increasing temperatures and intensifying coastal storms, the hamlet in places is visibly eroding and subsiding. We had a storm surge this fall. We lost about 20 feet of the land uh, in a week and a half. Once the permafrost is exposed, you can literally walk up to it and you can see it draining like a waterfall from the sun. So everything's dropping. Its damage is far reaching for the community, threatening cultural sites, traditional subsistence activities and infrastructure, such as roads and housing. We've had to relocate a few locals. We moved three houses from the north part of Tuck inland. The north side of the community, which is a place we call the point, was you know built up quite high. Today, only certain days you can walk out there now because it's covered with water um, because of erosion. One of their greatest concerns lies beyond the hamlet. Tuktiaktuk Island is a narrow 1.5 kilometre long natural wave break, which much of the community and harbour is currently protected by. It is eroding at an alarming two metres per year. In 18 years, if we don't do anything, we will lose the island. So the, the harbour will then become the ocean. Without this barrier, the whole community will be exposed. Coupled with increasing temperatures and rising sea levels, the land may disappear from underneath them in the same way that islands have vanished elsewhere in the Arctic. The changes that are happening now in, in my community, it's trying to figure out how do we sustain ourselves. For Tuktiaktuk -tuk to adapt, they must find a safe site inland to relocate to. But this takes time, so in the short term, they must defend their current hamlet. One thing I've always said is, you know, we can't just up and leave. So how do we do it going forwards? The biggest you know, asset we have right now is being able to have research done in the community. Tuktiaktuk is collaborating with scientists to better understand their landscape, to ensure their new site doesn't further jeopardize the community. Climate change adaptation for Tuktiaktuk looks like um, shore protection. It looks like understanding what ground thaw can, can do to, to different buildings. If we understand that, then we can, we can help Tuktiaktuk adapt to it by looking at um, different mitigation strategies. But instead of a purely academic approach, co-production of knowledge and community-based monitoring are at the heart of research efforts. The best way to understand what's happening on the land is to work with the local knowledge holders. So you have the science working with the local knowledge holders and, and their, their knowledge whether it's current or passed on through tradition. And we're making a push to, to build capacity in the community so that our people can govern our land and, and, and do some of the scientific work going forwards. The Tuktiaktuk Community Climate Resiliency Project was formed so that the community itself can tackle the challenges of understanding climate change in their own backyard head on. Growing up, you see the changes and then you're wondering like, 
why are these places changing? Diva Lin was compelled to undertake climate monitoring through observing changes firsthand while harvesting and hunting. Well, I collaborate a lot with the scientists. We install a bunch of um, time-lapse cameras. You have um, air sensor qualities there. So everything is being monitored right now. They don't need to teach me about my land and my culture, but they're teaching me how to read that data and collect that data. We collaborate information to try and like come up with a big picture about prediction and how that may look like in the future of our community. Arctic peoples do not view themselves as victims, but are adapting to maintain their culture and build resilience for future generations. I plan to pass down my knowledge onto my daughter, yeah, as my knowledge been passed on to me from my father. And I think that is very important because um, our community is so resilient. Adaptation is needed everywhere as landscapes are changing across the Arctic, affecting many indigenous communities in various ways. In Arctic Russia, indigenous reindeer herders and fishing communities of the Yamalo Nenets region are facing pressures. Warming temperatures bring early spring breakup of historically frozen rivers, disrupting reindeer migration routes. And along with industrial practices, significant summer warming has reportedly affected reproduction and population stability of some fish species. Но с изменением климата меняется обеспечение коренных жителей продуктами питания. Dr. Lobanov and colleagues have been monitoring the health of Nenets and Hamti communities for 20 years. They found up to a 70% decrease in consumption of fish and reindeer in some areas in just five years. Unreliable food security particularly impacts the health of relatives now living in settlements. With fewer deliveries of traditional foods from the land, they must supplement with processed foods. Данные виды рыб содержат ненасыщенные жирные кислоты, которые необходимы для адаптации к условиям Арктики. With fewer of these fish species in the diet, the team found an increased frequency in hypertension, strokes and heart attacks. However, there are positives to warming. With early springs, the growing season in the Arctic is lengthening, which some individuals are exploiting to their advantage, promoting both health and local food security. Mihail Okoteto, an innovative Nenet based in Yamal, lives traditionally close to nature and adopts green technology. He uses solar panels on his tundra home, an electric boat to collect soil from eroding riverbanks, and is part of a vegetable growing movement. Вот, это потепление, которое вот, принуждает наших людей соответствовать климату. Побудило меня задуматься о теплице. Это потепление, изменение климата. Rising temperatures have allowed Mikhail to successfully cultivate vegetables that need longer to grow, such as tomatoes, cucumbers and potatoes. Преимущество нашей фазенты, нашего домика – это свобода. Волюшка, это покой, самодостаточность, это очень важно для нас. То, что в магазине качество другое, то, что продается, когда сам выращиваешь, за сколько дней придет, потом с поселка надо, когда свое собственное, оно и достаточно очень влияет на здоровье. Работая в теплице, радость от того, что радость жизни. The new generation of indigenous people will face continuing challenges and opportunities from climate change. We have a responsibility to work with them to stand a chance of future-proofing their world while educating new generations from outside the Arctic to create a greener and more sustainable future.